Hey everybody, welcome to the Tone Church. I am your host, a talking t-shirt. Oh yeah, gotta love the comment section. Um, what are we doing today? Uh, we got some speakers. I'm gonna try out some speakers. I imagine because of the uh, topic of today's video, we might have a few guests come by that haven't been here before. So, uh, They'll uh, probably be very confused and uh, promptly exit. But anyway, um, if you haven't been playing the home game, we uh, restored a 1960 RCA, RCA 189B, which is a amplifier, preamp amplifier that was pulled from an old um, stereo console. We got that up and running, and we needed some speakers for it, and we ordered some speakers for it. So we're going to hook those up and see how they sound. And I guess we'll do... Uh, my thoughts, a little demo as best we can. I don't hi-fi demos over the computer. Just don't seem to make sense to me. But whatever, we'll do what we can. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing. Hang tight, here we go. Here is the amplifier in question. And it is stereo. Left and right, and it has a center base channel as well. Single-ended output with uh, EL84 slash 6BQ5 power tubes. Genuine RCA tubes. And then it has, uh, whatever the hell these are. What are these? Six CG7s, I think. What are you? I don't know. I'll put it on the screen. Um, so that's that. Um, there's other videos if you're interested in that. But today's subject is we have a pair of bookshelf speakers. Dayton Audio from Parts Express. Uh, MK402X. And we also have a passive subwoofer. Look at that glare. Man, didn't we just talk about this? The production quality of my videos. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, get these out of the box, get them hooked up, and see how they do. Oh, we got speaker wire too. And we got some uh, banana plugs. So we'll uh, check all this junk out and see how it sounds on the old RCA. So I ordered these on Parts Express, and three days later, the UPS man dropped them off. Seems decently well packed. Top and bottom, but there's no uh, stuffing in the middle there, but there is plenty of space. So uh, I guess it's packed good enough. They arrived without damage. Well, they appear to have arrived without damage. We'll find out in a minute. But yeah, that'll work. All right, here's the user manual. Nice four-page book. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Here are the specifications. And the reason I chose the speakers I did was, so the RCA amplifier, it's not pushing out a ton of power. It's single-ended, and you're probably getting 7 watts per channel on a good day. So we needed a kind of a low-power speaker system. And uh, what do we have here? Power handling, 40 watts RMS. This is still, you know, a little bit high, but, you know, the choices of speakers that fit the criteria I, looking, I was looking for is not great. Uh, anyway, so what do we have here? A 4-inch woofer, 3-quarter inch soft dome tweeter, 40 watts RMS, 80 watts max power handling, impedance 4 ohms. And if we look at the uh, user manual for the RS189B, and we look at the speakers, the amplifier was basically using 4 ohm speakers. Or even less, somewhere down to like three. It says like three to four ohms. So they were using low impedance speakers. So uh, yeah, we got a four ohm set of speakers. How about that. Uh, what else we got? Sensitivity is a little bit low. Uh, would have been nice to get a little bit better sensitivity, especially for the slow power amplifier. But again, the choices that fit all the criteria I was looking for were not great. Uh, unless I wanted to spend a ton of money, which I do not. And then blah, 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 you get all the other stuff right there that you can read for yourself. All right, let's take a look at the speaker itself. All right, so um, nothing fancy. Seems like it's got a, you know, a covering on top of plywood, but it's got nice, nice and firm. It's not the thickest wood in the world, but we do have nice uh, banana plug slash binding post. Looks like you can unscrew it and stick in bare wire as well. Is that correct? Yes, it is. 
So you can use uh, bare stripped wire or you can use banana plugs. So that's nice. And we got a little base port in the back here. Got some uh, stickers, rubber sticker feet. Let's see if we can take the grill off here. I'm not wrecking it. Yeah, that comes right off. And that's uh, interference fit into plastic grommets here. And yeah, she looks like a very respectable, nice little speaker. You see all that? Warfare tweeter. It's got, you know, it's not the heaviest thing in the world, but she's got a little bit of weight to her. All right, let's check out the subwoofer. All right, so this thing came in a big, gigantic box. So I can't wait to get this sucker open and see what we got. This is going to be the MKS X4. It's got four four-inch drivers in it. Low-profile passive subwoofer by Dayton Audio. I'm sure it says made in China around here somewhere. But uh, yeah, let's get this sucker out. Check it out. Inside the box was another box. It's kind of nice, huh? They want to keep you protected. Double up for your protection. You did say Titans. Alright, let's get this box open. See if there's another box in here. There it is. I knew you couldn't hide from us. Just like the bookshelf speakers, uh, it's packed the same way. It's got a top and bottom foam cap. And it's stuck in there. We got some... What do we got here? Another... Well, actually, this is two-page. If we fold it in half, it'll be a four-page, but two-page user manual. That'll come in handy. Uh, but there she is. How about that? In the background, I'm listening to Beato's new video about the... Uh, I think it's like the Spotify Top 10 or whatever they're called top songs global on spotify <laughs> Rhett typically does not like most pop music this is why i asked him to do this because i figured this would be be interesting yeah all right it's freaking torturing me Ugh. all right here she is and she's about the size and shape of a mid tower pc case uh not much to see on the bottom here, we got the uh, banana binding post. We got some big uh, rubber feet. This guy just, it's a little difficult to get out, but he just press fits in there. And here's our drivers. Can you see that? Got four of them. They're all looking at each other. Got a bit of a standoff here. Uh, but supposedly this should kick out some bass. And it says that you can either stand it up like this, but you can also set it down firing. So they're saying you can take these feet off and put them here. But uh, looking at it, these are Allen wrench bolts. And in here, if you can see that, that's a Phillips screw. Uh, I don't know. Let's investigate. All right, I see what's going on here now. The foot comes right off with your standard Phillips head screwdriver. And the bolts themselves actually have um, threads in them. So you don't need to remove or swap bolts or anything. You just unscrew it from there and stick it up here. Repeat three more times and you go from side facing to down facing. Pretty clever. I like it. All right, inside the user manual... Power handling 160 watts RMS 320 max. It's a bit overkill for our purposes here, but, you know, passive subwoofers themselves are few and far between. And then, you know, inexpensive ones that are 4 ohms, you know, forget about it. This was next to the only choice there was out there. But anyway, uh, frequency response, 40 to 500 hertz. Very nice. 88 dB sensitivity. That'll help. That's not too bad, so... You know, hopefully it'll sound good, but there is uh, only one way to find out. So let's hook it all up, see what we get. So my lackluster shopping skills have struck, striked, struck, struck back, returned, return of the shopping skills, revenge of the, anyway, uh, I only bought eight of these because I thought I needed six 
three speakers times two is six, but I forgot I have the banana plug binding posts I added to the RCA. So we're going to be two sets short, but that's okay. We'll just use bare wire on the left and right outputs of the amplifier. Uh, these are from Parts Express. Can you read part number, model number? Is that in focus? Probably not. What does it say they are? Uh, banana plug with dual set screws and black aluminum shell. Two pair. Uh, these are very inexpensive and they seem to be pretty nice. Let's get a set out here. Ooh. Stuff going everywhere. Uh, this thing screws on like that and then screws off like that. And uh, they got a nice little weight to them. Yeah, it's pretty beefy. And I uh, probably can't see that, but a set screw on each side. Appear to be uh, gold colored plated. And uh, yeah, it should work just fine. So uh, let's, I've already begun here. Let's uh, set up another one. Um, I'm gonna use this one for the subwoofer, so. I'll make this one a little bit long and this is just a temporary setup because all this stuff will be going to the tone princess and she can set up the stuff wherever she wants it in her music listening area uh what do we need here all right so we need to hook up banana plugs to speaker wire this is one way of doing it Cut your speaker wire to length. And get some uh, cutters here to get the, uh, cut it right in the middle to get it started. And then you can peel them apart. Ooh. Oh, this is the speaker wire we're using. Also Parts Express. Seems to be reasonably high quality. I think this is 14 gauge. Yeah. So this is six miles of 14 gauge wire. It was very inexpensive. Pretty happy about this. And one side has a red line, the other side has no lines on it. This must be a new modern thing, because back in the day, uh, it would have a black line on it. Or if it was black wire, black um, insulation, have a white line on it, and that would be for the negative. But now I guess we're using a red line for the positive. Doesn't matter, as long as uh, both ends are the same. So you have the red plug with the red line wire. As long as this side has the red plug with the red line wire and you hook those both up to the positives on your amplifier and your speaker, you will be fine. Alright. So we get our banana plug. Set screws are basically all the way in, so we need to back these out. And I'm just looking down the hole to see where the set screw will no longer be obstructing the insertion of any conductor. Sounds dirty. All right. So then, before we do any cutting or stripping of insulation, we want to see how far down this sucker goes. Because I, I can't stand a uh, little OCD thing here. If you strip way too much, you know, and you get a bunch of bare exposed wire sticking out of the back of this, I drive you, drive me nuts. It's also important that you know you're not putting a set screw down on insulation. You want to be screwing down on actual wire so it's about that big and because there's enough room in there we're going to actually fold the wire over onto itself so we need twice that use our strippers you see all that this is riveting entertainment i'm sure uh strips nice easy i like this wire what we're gonna do here, I'm not gonna give it a tight twist, but I don't want the stuff to be fraying all over the place. We're just gonna uh, solder the end. You see that? Yeah, you can see that. So we got helping hands, Mr. Helping Hands helping us. Put a tiny little bit of flux on there. Help spread the solder around. Got our solder. This happens to be a 6337 blend. Uh, lead tin, not, we don't use that garbage, silver stuff. But that is not a recommendation, that's just what I do. 
tin your tip. And again, we're not going to solder the whole thing. We're just going to tin the very end of the, the wire so when, you know, we insert this into the banana plug, it doesn't splay out all over the place. All right, start again. Nice clean tip. Tin it a little bit. That's all she wrote. When you're soldering, what you're not doing is blobbing melted solder onto the components you're soldering. What you're doing is you want your tin tipped a little bit because you'll have a little bit of liquid solder on your tip. And when you press that against the, the thing you're soldering, that'll wrap around a little bit and that'll help spread the heat around. And then, for instance, on this, we're heating the item we're trying to solder, which is the speaker wire, and then introducing the solder onto the heated speaker wire. All right, we're not blobbing it onto the tip and then smashing it up onto the speaker wire. You will have very poor results if you do that. But there you go. This is what we got. It's just like first, you know, quarter inch of the wire has been tinned. All right. I'm going to fold this in half. Like so. Jam this down the hole. Like so. Oh, look at that. We freaking nailed it. The insulation goes right up to the back of the plug. I'd rather be lucky than good any day, but here we are. And then we're going to uh, screw down our set screws. And you don't need to kill it, but you do need to screw it down enough so the this thing will be able to fit around it. But you don't need to kill it. You just want it to be nice and snug. Not killed. Maybe just tight enough to put it into the ICU. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. That's nice and snug. Finally, we take the outer sleeve, or whatever the heck they call this thing. Screw her on. There you go. That's it, baby. And if we want to be extra special, we can check continuity with Mr. Multimeter. Okay, first thing we're going to do is confirm the multimeter is multimeter metering, which it is. So we just did the, the red side. Here's the red side on the opposite end. There you go. See how much resistance we have here. DC resistance. Meeny, 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 meeny. Someone isn't gonna like that. Zero. That's pretty freaking good. All right, moving on. All right, so I had mentioned earlier that I was looking for low watt, low power speakers for this amplifier. And, um,. Some of you who may be new to this uh, world may be asking, why the heck would you want low-watt speakers? Don't you want to get as many watts as you can afford? And the short answer to that is obviously no. How about no, Scott? Okay. So wattage rating on a speaker means how much power it can handle without blowing up or failing. And so our amplifier, as we said, is about 7 watts per channel. So ideally, when you're choosing power handling on your speakers, you want it to be about double of the expected output of your amplifier. So about 15 watts would have been perfect, or even 20 would be a good match for this amplifier. And what happens is, if you have overrated speakers, it's like buying a Ferrari and when you drive it, you know, you don't go past 2,000 RPMs. The um, amp won't be able to drive the speaker in and out the full, you know, range of its motion. Does that make sense? What are we doing here? What is this? Um, and so you, you'll have uh, poor sound quality. Reduced bass. Might be shrill and cold sounding. So, that's why we weren't looking for, you know, big giant 1,000 watt speakers for this amplifier. 
And then another thing is about, you know, a lot of people succumb to bigger is better. Get the most powerful thing you can afford. You also need to take into consideration, and I think we're going to drop an audio file term here, your listening experience. What do you generally, how do you generally listen to your music? I mean, are you in a dorm room? Are you in an apartment building where you can't turn your radio past two? Or do you live in a farm out in the middle of nowhere where you generally, you know, crank your radio to volume levels that, you know, rival a Deep Purple concert at the Coliseum? And so you kind of want to tailor your uh, choices for equipment to how you plan on listening to it. Um... I'm sure I could put that more eloquently with uh, more insight, but uh, that's a good beginning. You know, in the guitar world, uh, recording guitar, I have found, anyway, personal experience that, you know, when you crank a Marshall to 10 and mic it up and try to record it, it kind of sounds like shit. There's a nice sweet spot where the your final end product of recorded guitar sound is really nice and that's not a cranked Marshall you know it's a little bit down a little bit uh, if you watch uh, some videos on how uh, Van Halen recorded their first few albums you know Eddie wanted to get that nice distorted sound nice distorted saturated brown sound without having to blow his fucking ears out so I'm not sure where I was going with this, but bigger is not always better. But it sure is fun. All right, as I mentioned before, the left and right channels on the amplifier end are just going to be bare wires through the side of the binding posts. Um, you want to strip off enough wire so it goes completely through the binding post. And you can just barely see it on the other side, but it's not like hanging out where it's going to touch stuff and short stuff out. But when you screw the cap down, you don't want to grab on the insulation. You want to grab on the wire. And again, because we can, I'm just going to tin the ends. So the uh, strands of the speaker wire don't get all cattywampus. Yeah. That's disgusting. What's going on here? Can't keep my tip clean. Oh, you son of a bitch. Got one strand that went haywire. Oh, it'll have to do. Bam. That's all she wrote. Got a bunch of fire engines outside. I think somebody lit their Christmas tree on fire. My tree! So what's the matter with you? Anyway, as discussed, we want to stick the bare wire through the side of the binding post. And when we screw it down, we don't want to screw onto the insulation, just the uh, wire itself. And over here, you can see on the tin den, we got about, I don't know, 3 sixteenths extra sticking out. So we're, we're going to go ahead and trim that. And we can actually do that right here, because this is in the perfect spot, right? We'll go ahead and get our flush cutters. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Backwards through a viewfinder. Boing. There you go. Perfect. Almost there. Getting exciting. All right, one last little thing before we get to the uh, sound demo. I'd mentioned that I wanted four ohm speakers for this amplifier. And that's because the engineers that designed this circuit, this amplifier, uh, designed it with the output transformers uh, selected for four ohm speakers. And the reason why, and this is especially for tube audio, uh, it's probably the same for solid state, but I'm not a big solid state guy. What the output transformers do is they couple the power tubes with your speakers. All right, so these are six BQ5s, and vacuum tubes are high voltage low current things and speakers are low voltage high current 
uh, components. And so what that does is the output transformer lowers the voltage and increases the current. Ohm's law, I equals V over R. If your voltage goes up, current goes down. If your voltage goes down, the current goes up. So these output transformers were selected to couple 6 BQ5s with 4 ohm speakers. So this will, um, you could use speakers with a higher, uh, higher ohm speakers with this. And it won't hurt it, it just won't run as good. Because what they have done is they've selected transformers with the, you know, the number of windings, the winding ratio, etc. That is ideal to couple these tubes with 4 ohm speakers. When you run into problems is, so this is made for 4 ohm speakers, is if you were to go down to like 2 ohms or 1 ohm. What happens is, remember Ohm's Law, when the resistance goes down, the current goes up. And so what ends up happening is you're running these output transformers at a higher current than they were designed to handle. And um, that's when you get into trouble. That's when you start blowing up transformers and blowing up tubes and things like that. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and the final thing I wanted to mention is with uh, tube audio, you never want to turn the amplifier on if there's nothing connected to your speaker outputs. You always need to have a speaker or some kind of load connected to your speaker outputs because basically you're running um, these at like infinite current on paper. And that's not that in reality, but you know, it'll, it'll run away. You'll blow your shit up is the bottom line. Uh, a lot of this is beyond the scope of this video, but in a nutshell, it ain't good. So to audio, make sure you always have speakers connected of the proper impedance before you turn it on. All right, let's get to the sound demo. All right, we have everything all hooked up right here. And it's uh, not the best setup here. It's kind of haphazard. Um, don't have a ton of space here in the tone church, but now it's time for the sound demo. And the reason why we go through all this trouble of restoring 62 year old tube amplifiers and all this stuff is because, you know, as audiophiles, as music lovers, you know, we want to listen to some of the finest recorded music ever recorded in the finest listening conditions possible. I could read a, a newspaper through it, so pretty light in color with a medium plus viscosity. So with that in mind, I chose a uh, beautiful string quartet in A minor. Tannins are medium plus, for sure. They're there. Fruit tannins, right in the front. Uh, composed by, uh, the name of the composer was Mark Turian. And uh, without further ado, let's uh, give it a listen. See how we did.
Thank you, Blues. That was great. So I've been listening to the radio throughout the day, trying out all sorts of music, different types of music. And so my observations are, um, this amp itself right here is probably not going to be the greatest test bench for these speakers uh, because it just does not have enough power. You know, what I'm finding is I can't turn it up past like three quarters until I get distortion. and I just keep going back to the volume knob, just trying to eke out a little bit more. But once you start hitting distortion, it sounds kind of cruddy. That being said, the limitations of the amp, I guess is what I'm saying, not these speakers. But I uh, did some experimentation separating the speakers. And initial observations are they sound um, respectably well. I don't have the greatest uh, bass line to compare them to, but... Sound pretty damn good to me um, with the volume set at a reasonable level. So we're not getting distortion. Uh, the sound is it's really nice. The treble is very articulate. Um, you definitely know where the speakers are by like hi-hats and stuff like that. But the sound stage, I guess is the word you guys like to use. The sound stage is, is fantastic. If you were to close your eyes and try and point, you know, where's the singer, singer's voice coming from? You know, it's in a space in between the speakers. You can't really tell that there's two separate speakers playing music. You know, the uh, the band is separate. You got the singer in the middle. You get guitars over here and this space in between the speakers. But like I said, the uh, the the high stuff, the, the high treble stuff, like hi hats. You know, you you definitely know that it's coming from this area. But everything else in the middle sounds fantastic. Uh, very articulate and it just sounds really nice and the subwoofer uh is excellent it blends in really nice so it's just got a really nice sound to it now because it is such a low, low wattage amplifier you know if all i was doing was sitting down to enjoy some music you know this would be disappointing because you know i'm not getting a punch of the mid-range or the, the slap of like a kick drum from the, the bass but if i'm sitting up here on the bench soldering some stuff together building an amplifier and I have this thing playing it'd be just about perfect and it sounds fantastic so I guess the bottom line is you know this probably isn't the best judge or actually we're gonna do need to do some more experimentation with other amplifiers with these speakers to really know for sure you know how they are but I mean for the price this setup here I mean the two speakers the speaker wire the subwoofer and the banana plugs it was like 200 bucks for everything all in you know Sounds fantastic to me, as does the amplifier. It's got a really, really nice sound to it. It's just not very loud. So, uh, yeah, there you go. There's our first hi-fi demo. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got right now. We'll do a little more experimentation. I got some parts on order for this guy. We need to uh, finish up a couple of odds and ends. And, you know, I'll check the bias on the output tubes. Maybe we can eke out a, another wad or two out of them and... You know, we just need a little bit more for this to be really, really nice. But uh, there you go. want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, if you made it this far in the video, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. I know I did. And then uh, come back for more. we got a lot of cool stuff coming. All right, rock on, dudes and dudettes.
Oof.